Hi everyone, it's the Math Sorcerer here with Chegg. In this video, we're going to talk about arc length and curvature. The first thing we're going to discuss is arc length. Here you see a picture, and basically the arc length is the length of this blue curve. Then we're going to discuss the unit tangent vector t and the unit normal vector n, which you can see pictured here in the graph. And lastly, we'll discuss curvature, which is a measure of how sharply a curve bends. As you can see in this picture, the curve is bending more at P than it is at Q. The curvature at P is greater than the curvature at Q. Okay, let's go ahead and do an example. So we have a vector valued function, R of T is equal to sine T comma cosine T comma T. We're being asked to find the arc length over zero one. Solution. So the arc length is given by the following formula. L is equal to the definite integral from A to B of the magnitude of R prime of T. And this is being integrated with respect to T. So we'll start by finding the derivative of R. So R prime of T, so since it's a vector valued function, all we have to do is differentiate each component. The derivative of sine is cosine. The derivative of cosine is negative sine and the derivative of t is one. Now to find the magnitude, we simply square each of the components and take the square root. So this is going to be the square root of cosine squared t, plus here when we square the sine, the negative will go away, but I'll go ahead and leave it for now, plus and then one squared. This is equal to this will become sine squared with no negative. Cosine squared plus sine squared is one, a very popular identity, plus and then one squared is one. And one plus one is equal to two. So now we take this and we plug it into our formula. So L is the integral from, in this particular case, A is zero and B is one. These are usually given in the problems. And now the magnitude we said was the square root of two and we're integrating with respect to t. Because we're integrating a constant, we just attach the variable, so in this case t. I'm gonna put the t in the front so there's no confusion, so I'm gonna write it like this, t square root two, and bracket going from zero to one. As always, when you're doing integration like this, you always want to plug in the top number first. We have one times the square root of two, subtract, plug in the zero, so you get zero times the square root of two. We end up with the square root of two. And that would be the arc length of this vector valued function over zero one. Now let's go ahead and find the unit tangent vector solution. The formula for the unit tangent vector is t of little t, and that's equal to the derivative of the position function, so r prime of t, divided by the magnitude of the derivative of the position function. And the nice thing is we've already computed these things. So if you look at the magnitude of the derivative of the position function, it's up here, it's the square root of two. We worked it out before. And we have the derivative up here as well. So it's basically one over the square root of two times, right, because we're dividing by the square root of two, so it's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. Cosine t, negative sine t, and then one. And that's getting that from up here. So now what we can do is just clean it up, maybe distribute um, the one over square root two. So the unit tangent vector, t of t, is equal to bracket cosine t over the square root of two, comma negative sine t over the square root of two, comma one over the square root of two. And so that would be the unit tangent vector in this particular problem. Let's go ahead and find the unit normal vector solution. The unit normal vector is given by the formula n of t, and it's equal to the derivative of the unit tangent vector divided by the magnitude of the derivative of the unit tangent vector. So here we have the unit tangent vector, which we discovered in the previous example. So let's go ahead and take the derivative. So t prime, and since it's a vector valued function, you just differentiate each component. These square root of twos, they're constants, so they hang out. So it's gonna be angle bracket, 
We have the cosine is negative sine. And then we have the square root of two. And then the derivative of sine is cosine. So we have, we have negative cosine t over root two. And then this is interesting. The last component is a constant. This derivative is zero. Now we can find the magnitude. I'll write it over here. So the magnitude of t prime of t. Again, we just square each of the components and take the square roots. I'm going to write a giant square root. And we're squaring negative sine t over the square root of 2 plus negative cosine t over the square root of 2 plus, and we're also squaring the 0, which is 0 squared. This is equal to. So we're going to have that sine squared plus cosine squared there, which is going to be 1. but I'll go ahead and show an extra step here. So when we square the square root of two, oh, we're just gonna get two. So it's gonna be one half sine squared t plus same thing here, one half cosine squared t. And you can pull out the one half and you end up with sine squared plus cosine squared, which is a very popular identity in trigonometry, it's equal to one. It's probably the easiest one, which is really nice. This is the square root of one half times one. We just get the square root of one half. The square root of one half is the square root of one, which is one over the square root of two. Now here's the cool part. Something really nice is about to happen. This is awesome. So the unit normal vector, n of t, so what is it? It's the derivative which we took up here, and we're dividing it by this. So basically we're multiplying by the reciprocal. So if you take this number and you flip it and you multiply by this, what's gonna happen? All the square root of twos will cancel, right? I'll show you, it'll be square root of two over one, and then times t prime, which is this vector valued function. And then we still have the zero over here. And now when you distribute here, um, it's going to cancel it. And so we end up with a really nice answer of negative sine t, negative cosine t, comma zero. And that works out really beautifully. That would be the unit normal vector. We finally reach the part where we find the curvature. And this is usually much more challenging, except in this problem, we've already done all of the work. So we basically just have to plug in the numbers. We have two choices for formulas. The first one is k equals the magnitude of t prime over the magnitude of r prime. The second one is k equal to the magnitude of r prime cross r double prime divided by the magnitude of r prime cubed. The bottom formula is actually usually more convenient, but let's go ahead and use the top formula because we already have these quantities and in this particular case, it's going to be easier. So k is equal to, so using this top formula, we're looking for the magnitude of t prime of t. So if we scroll up, we did that earlier, that was one over the square root of two. So all we do is fill that in. And again, if this seems easy, it's because we've already done all the hard work. Normally these problems take a very long time because you have to go the process of finding these things, which we've already done. And the magnitude of r prime, that was at the very, very beginning. We found that when we found the arc length, and that was the square root of two. So all we do now is plug that in, the square root of two. So this is really one over the square root of two, and we're dividing by the square root of two, so we really multiply by the reciprocal. We end up with that, and so we end up with just one over two, and that would be the curvature. Pretty fun, and just know that these problems take a lot of practice, so the more problems you do, the better you will get. I hope this video has been helpful. Good luck.